hi so in this video i'm going to teach you all about 3 volt 5 volt circuit for the laptop motherboard in this video you're going to to know everything you want to know about 3 volt 5 volt circuit in the laptop motherboard so we're gonna see first thing the components of the 3 volt 5 volt circuit how 3 volt 5 volt circuit works how to track and trace voltage and signals in the 3 volt 5 volt circuit and finally how to use the multimeter and check a faulty 3 volt 5 volt circuit and then solve the problem so let's get started but please don't forget to subscribe share and like because your likes motivate me to create more and more vo videos for you and for anyone who want to join me in my patreon page you are very welcome there i post every single day in a daily basis mini posts including laptop schematics how to test component using the multimeter and much more so you are very welcome so let's get started so as you can see here we have a 3 volt 5 volt circuit so as you can see always for 3 volt 5 volt circuit we have two parts this is the first part and over here we have the second part or channel so here as you can see we have 5 volts as you can see here okay so this is the 5 volt channel as you can see here okay and over here we have 3.3 volts okay so this is the 3.3 volt channel okay so in every channel you will find of course we have the ic this is the ic the control ic its reference in the motherboard is u56 as you can see and over here we have its part number for example if you have a bad ic you should use this part number to change or to replace to IC okay so in every channel we have some component including two MOSFETs as you can see for S channel here also we have two MOSFETs for this channel okay then we have inductor here also we have inductor and we have as you can see over here electrolytic capacitor in order to filter the current here also we have electrolytic capacitor okay so this is the main component in 3 volt 5 volts circuit of course don't forget this ceramic capacitors in the input because this ceramic capacitors also are very important they filter the voltage and remove the noise and eliminate the noise from the voltage okay so how 3 volt 5 volt circuit work okay so here we want to generate as you can see here 5 volt okay so to generate this 5 volt we should get first an input voltage over here we have the input voltage as you can see we have dc but out this voltage equal to 19 volt okay equal to 19 volt so this voltage will pass through this filtering capacitors in order to be filtered and goes directly to the drain of this MOSFET so here we have four pins to connected together means here we have the drain here we have the source and here we have the gate so once this MOSFET is controlled by this IC as you can see here we have the drive high so this IC sends a control signal to the gate of this MOSFET in order to be in active state so the voltage will pass through this MOSFET and then uh, goes here here we will get 5 volt okay here we have 19 volt but here we will get 5 volt because this MOSFET is a voltage regulator it transforms 19 volt to 5 volt after receiving the control signal from the IC here also this also will receive the control signal here as you can see we have to drive low so these two MOSFETs are work together for example here we want to get 5 volt but sometimes we can get less or more that's why we have this voltage that is connected to the ground in order to adjust the voltage here and to eliminate the extra voltage okay then the voltage will go directly and pass through this inductor as you know the inductor has as a purpose to increase the current 
the reference for the inductor is L50 okay and then the voltage will pass through this electrolytic capacitor in order to be filtered and obtain a continuous voltage okay so the same working principle here for 3.3 volt the same thing here we have as you can see the DC but out equal to 19 volt we have as you can see three filtering capacitors the voltage will go directly to this first voltage regulator and then this voltage regulator as you can see will receive the control signal from the IC here we have to drive high as you can see and this one also will receive the control signal so the voltage will pass here here we have 19 volt here we will get 3.3 volt because this voltage regulator transform 19 volt to 3.3 volt okay so the 3.3 volt will pass through this inductor l front here in order to increase the current because sometimes you can get a voltage a right voltage for example 3.3 volt but the current is not enough for the circuit that's why we call this inductor in order to increase the current and then here we have the electrolytic capacitor in order to filter and make the current a pure and continuous current okay and then we will get 3.3 volt so this is how this circuit works now let's see right now if for example you have a failed laptop motherboard due to 3 volt 5 volt circuit what should you check how to use your own your multimeter and what is the probable component that caused the problem so let's get started so for example if you have a bad motherboard due to a failed 3 volt 5 volt circuit okay so what we should check and how we should check this circuit so the main component here in the circuit are the IC, these two MOSFETs over here, okay? And we have the electrolytic capacitor over here, and we have these ceramic capacitors over here. The inductor, no. Why I choose this component? I choose this component because all these components are connected to the ground as you can see the electrode capacitor is connected to the ground these two MOSFETs especially this one is connected to the ground the IC is connected to the ground we have this MOSFET connected to the ground we have this electrolytic, electrolytic capacitor connected to the ground and these capacitors are connected to the ground so this is the components that you can find failed component when you have a failed 3 volt 5 volt circuit you should check this component okay including ic mosfets serum capacitors and electrolytic capacitors 95 percent the failed component in any circuit in the laptop due to this component so how you can diagnose the 3 volt 5 volt circuit and isolate the failed component i show you how so as you can see here so let's remove first these squares over here okay so here we have the main voltage as you can see okay so first what should we do we should first check whether we get the main voltage or not i cannot look for 5 volt or 3 3.3 volt without confirm if i get this voltage or not because without this voltage nothing will happen here okay so once i check here using my multimeter I, you can check in order to check whether you have this voltage or not you can check one of these ceramic capacitors in this side because the other side is connected to the ground or you can check the drain of this MOSFET as you can see okay so once you check here and you find that 19 volt is exists okay so let's even write here 19 volt so so let's type down here 19 volt okay so 19 volt so once you find 19 volt here in the drain of this MOSFET, then what is the next step? The next step is 
to check whether you get here the control signal or not in the gate of this MOSFET. Okay, so because without the control signal, this MOSFET cannot be operated, cannot enter into active state. So the control signal from this IC should be received by the MOSFET. Once it is received, the MOSFET will let the voltage to pass in the other direction. After that, let's assume that we find here in the source of the MOSFET and drain of this MOSFET 5 volt. But 5 volt is not present here, is not present here. So maybe the inductor, the inductor should be a cut inductor. If you find, for example, 19 volt or 3.5 volt here and here is absent, means the inductor is bad. Okay, so the electrolytic capacitor could be shorter to the ground. If the electrolytic capacitor is shorter to the ground, so you can never find here 5 volt. So you can find 19 volt here and also the MOSFET received the control signal. But here 5 volt is absent means you have a short circuit. Maybe this MOSFET is shorter to the ground or this MOSFET is shorter to, gr to the ground. I will show you a trick that you can find. For example, if you you have these two components that are shorter to the ground, but you, do, you didn't know which one of the those are shorter to the ground. You can just remove this inductor. Okay, you can remove this inductor. If this, the electrolytic capacitor is the shorter component to the ground, you will find the short in this side. Okay, but here no short. But if this one is shorter to the ground or even the IC shorter to the ground, you will find the short in the side, but not in the side. Okay, so the same thing for 3 volt, 5 volt circuit. You should always check whether you have the 19 volt, the DC but out or the main voltage. Then check whether this MOSFET receive the control signal and then check if these MOSFETs are shorter to the ground or not. So that's it for this video guys, thank you very much. I don't want uh, to make a very long video, so thank you very much and please don't forget to subscribe, share and like the video because your likes motivate me to create more and more videos for you. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.